Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today we have another lesson in Mega Goal 6. But let's start with taking a, a quick overview of the previous lesson. We started with the title of this unit, which is Beauty is Only Skin Deep. And we said it means that the beauty is an artificial thing. It doesn't reflect the inner beauty and the personal traits of the person. Then after that, we talked about the seventh lesson in this unit, which is vocabulary building. In this part, we had eight words that are extracted from the essay. These words emerge, famine, ideal, instinctive, plump, proportion, standards, and vary. We talked about the meaning of each one of them. We explained them. We started with emerge. We said it means something that come from nowhere or come from nowhere to the existence. Number two, famine, people dying from the shortage of food, ideal, something perfect, instinctive, something following the feeling, not the reason, plump, chubby, or stucky, proportion, the suitability or the fitness of something, standards are the measures, and the last one, vary means changes from someone or from something to another. And the answers of these words are as shown here on this slide. After that, we started reading the essay together. The title of the essay is Changing Concepts of Beauty in History. We talked about the meaning of the word concept. We said the word concept means the idea behind something or the notion behind something. So when we say changing concepts of beauty in history, it means changing of the ideas of people or what people think or the perspectives of people toward beauty throughout history. We read this essay together. We talked about the new meanings, the new ideas. We started the lesson by talking about the ways or the strategies of reading an essay or reading a book or any text. We said, for example, if we want to ask ourselves some questions that could help us to understand what we are going to read better, is that we should start um, not reading everything in the essay, but we should start skimming through the essay or skimming through the book so we get uh, a glimpse of idea of what, what is this about, to have a main idea about what we are going to read. There are many strategies. We talked about the first one, which is the skimming. We go quickly over what we are going to read to be able to understand the main idea of the text. The second thing is scanning. This is what we do when we are looking for a specific or uh, a piece of information. If we are looking for a specific information, we go scanning. We scroll, our, we scroll our eyes through the text in order to find uh, this information. Once we find this piece of information, we stop reading and that's it. Okay, so I always urge my students to do the skimming before reading the essay so they can know the main idea of this essay and also they ask themselves the proper question that could help them uh, understand the essay deeply. We, we had some questions before we start reading this essay together. Uh, I asked you to find these questions while you read and listen to the recording of this essay. Then we talked about this statement before reading. We said that it's good to put some or to ask ourselves some questions or to read some questions regarding the essay. For example, here, describe the features that you notice when you first meet, meet someone. This is a statement related to what we have read together. It's good to ask yourself this question, think about it, try to reflect and find answers for this question before you start reading. After that, we read this essay together. 
We talked about the new words, the new ideas. We have uh, discussed some of the concepts that has changed from the past to the, uh, to the present. Then after that, we moved to the post-reading part, which is the after reading. In this part, we have comprehension questions. These five questions, we talked about the proper way of answering these questions. We said, read the question, try to find the key words in this question. For example, number one, the key, the key words are ancient Greeks and formula. Find or underline the key words, then go back to the essay, scan the essay, try to find these three words. Once you find the answer, this is the second, or sorry, the third step. Once you find the answer, read the whole sentence, try to understand it, then paraphrase the sentence. This is the fourth step. What is the meaning of paraphrase the sentence? Rewrite the sentence by using your own words. Don't copy the author's words. Don't use the exact words. The exact words in the essay, use your own words because copying other people's words is called plagiarism, and we said it's something that we should always avoid. We did the same with every question. We uh, underlined the keywords like symmetry, research, uh, something considered beautiful at certain time and place in history. Here, we focused on places like uh, China and Britain and so on. And here, we have the word attitudes. We scanned through the essay, we found the answers together, and the answers are as we are showing here on the following slides. Today we have the 10th lesson in Unit 3. It is writing. Today we are going to learn how to write a persuasive essay. Persuasive essay. What do you think is the meaning of persuasive? We all know what is the meaning of essay. Essay is a, a piece of text that has many paragraphs, like five, six paragraphs. This is an essay. But what is the meaning of persuasive? Persuasive means a text or an essay that you write to convince the people or the readers of your own ideas. You have an idea, you have a hypothesis, you have a, th you have a thesis that you want to convince people it is that what you are saying is true or uh, is something that they should believe. So you use the persuasive essay to write your own ideas so you can convince people of your own thoughts. This is what's the persuasive essay. But before we start, reading uh, the importance of wealth, we will go back now and start with the questions here. We have some questions that doesn't have a true or false answers. Each one of these questions has a variety of answers. I'm pretty sure that each one of you will have a different answer. So there is no right or wrong answers. I will not provide you with any suggestions for, for the answers in, in, in this part. I will leave the answers for you, but I will just read the questions, think with you about these questions, then we will go after that to the importance of wealth. The first one is, how important is wealth in your view? So here we're talking about your view. We're not talking about anyone else's view. So this is regarding your own view. What can it buy and make a list? Number two, are there things that money can't buy? What are they? We all know that money buy a lot of things, but there are things that money can't buy. 
What are these things? Make, you can make a list if you want. Number three, what do you think, or sorry, why, why do you think most people are interested in earning enough money for their families? What kind of expenses do they need to cover? Number four, read the text and find out. These are questions that you can go back and answer after you read uh, the paragraph, uh, the text. The last one, do you agree or disagree with the writer? Why or why not? The writer argues that money is important or uh, wealth and being wealthy is important for everyone and people should seek uh, fortune. Uh, so, do you agree with the writer or not? If you agree with him, why do you agree? If you don't agree with him, why you don't agree with him? Now we have here this part, the importance of wealth. This is an example of a persuasive essay. In this essay, there are all the strategies that you need to learn so you can write your own persuasive essay. We have an introduction, we have three bodies, and we have a conclusion. In each part, we have thesis statement, we have examples, we have also opposing others' uh, arguments and uh, trying to refute their own arguments. Now we will listen to this uh, essay. I want you to pick up your pen, underline the new words, try to underline the parts where uh, the author um, state his or her uh, thesis statement. Then after that, we will go back together and try to analyze and understand the elements of this essay so we can be able to write our own persuasive essays properly. Now let's go ahead and listen to this paragraph. Page 42, 10, Writing. The Importance of Wealth. Although a lot of people say that money is not everything, I think wealth brings far more benefits than problems. It is common knowledge that people who are well off have easier lives. They don't have to worry about living expenses, household bills, school tuition, medical bills, and a lot more. Consider a person who has three children. He is educated and holds a reasonable job with a reasonable salary. However, one of his children develops a condition that requires ongoing care and costly medication, while the other two are planning to study law and medicine. They expect to eventually go abroad in order to complete their postgraduate studies and specializations. His wife, who used to teach, can no longer work as she has a problem with her eyes. How is he going to manage? It is obvious that this otherwise happy person with a happy family is faced with a predicament. He has to decide whether he can support everyone's plans and dreams or prioritize things in a way that will allow for partial satisfaction. In other words, should he encourage his two healthy children to go ahead and study but not expect to specialize abroad? Or should he reduce medical expenses by moving his sick child to a cheaper facility? On the other hand, they are all his children, and he doesn't want to discriminate against any of them. He wishes he could find a way to fund everything and not displease anyone. In addition, his wife is going to need surgery soon. I think the situation above demonstrates the importance of money as a means of providing and catering for a family's needs in a satisfactory manner. None of the problems that worry the father day and night and have changed his mood and personality would exist if he had the funds. Naturally, wealth cannot buy happiness if there is none to be had. On the other hand, it can help sustain it in cases like the one described. So regardless of how materialistic this might sound, I believe that money is important. What I would like to say to those who claim that health is more important is that, although this might be true, it is equally true that having money can preserve a sense of well-being and health more effectively than not. 
We have just listened and read together a persuasive essay. The title of this persuasive essay is The Importance of Wealth. So let's go back again to the meaning of persuasive essay. We said that you are trying to convince people of a thought you have. You have a thought in your mind, you have an idea, you have an opinion, and you want to persuade, you want to convince people that what you are saying is true. So you write this essay to prove your, uh, or to prove what you are saying is true. We have here five paragraphs, okay? Now we will go to the questions part so we can focus more on what we have just read together. Number six, read the text again and answer the questions. The first one, how many paragraphs are used? As we have seen here, we have five paragraphs. What is the theme of each paragraph? Number two, identify the thesis statement and supporting arguments. Now let's talk about the word thesis statement. What is the meaning of thesis statement? Have you heard about this expression before thesis statement? Thesis statement means your point of view about something. When you express your viewpoint about something, this is, this is called a thesis statement. So in each paragraph, there is a thesis statement. And to be able to find this thesis statement, you should firstly understand what is the meaning of this expression. So we are going now to, uh, we are going to find, this is the, the, th the thesis statement in each part or in each paragraph in this essay, but firstly, we have to know what is the meaning of thesis statement. It is a view or a point of view, okay? So we are looking for points of views. In the first one, which one do you think represent the, the, the thesis, thesis statement? Although a lot of people say the money is not everything, I think wealth brings far more benefits than problems. This is thesis statement. Why it is called thesis statement? Because the author represent, or the author is saying his or her point of view. This is in the first paragraph. How about the second paragraph? Consider a person who has three children, he is educated and holds a reasonable job with a reasonable salary. However, one of his children develops a condition that requires ongoing care and costly medication, while the other two are planning to study law and medicine. This is the second thesis statement. He has here an example of something that requires having money. Another thesis statement in the third paragraph is he has to decide till the end of the sentence, which is satisfaction. In the fourth paragraph, the thesis statement starts with, I think the situation until the word manner. So we, after identifying for thesis statements, we know that a thesis statement is one sentence. It is not a part of a sentence, it is one sentence like we have here. I think the situation above demonstrates the importance of money as a means of providing and catering for families' needs in a satisfactory manner. So this is a complete sentence. The last thesis statement is, so regardless of how materialistic this might sound, I believe that money is important. And this is the last thesis statement in this um, essay. We have after that, what does the writer use to support his view? The writer use three things, examples, questions to the reader, and opposing 
views and comments. How did that happen? The, uh, the author has, have used many examples. One of them is that when he said, consider a person who has three children, he had, uh, or he provided us with a situation where a person is having someone or a, a kid who has an illness and needs an ongoing uh, diagnosis and so on. So this is an example that you can provide to convince people of your own thought. Another thing is questions to the readers. You can ask questions about anything. For example, here we have some questions like, or should he reduce medical expenses by moving his sick child to a cheaper facility? This is one of the questions or one of the ways that you can use to convince the readers. Or here also another question is, how is he going to manage? The last thing is opposing views and comments by trying to copy or paraphrase the, the opinions of the other people or the people who are having uh, an opposed or a different opinions of your own by uh, saying their, their own opinions and then refute these opinions. After that, we have here this chart. Now we have learned together how to write a persuasive essay, or let's say we learned what are the, the elements of the persuasive essay. We've learned that it has an introduction, it has more than one or two bodies, and it has a conclusion. And in each one of them, there is a thesis statement where we uh, provide after each thesis statement an example uh, of our own experience or from someone's uh, own experience. We have here a chart that has two columns. Beauty is important because, and beauty is not important because. So pick, pick one of the stances that you are going uh, to go with so you can research for uh, information regarding uh, this opinion or this stance, then let's read the questions together. Write a persuasive essay answering the question, is beauty important? So the question that you are going to answer is, is beauty important? If you think beauty is important, the most of your work will be here. If you think beauty is not important, you will spend more time on this part. Number two, think of reasons why beauty is and is not important and write them in a chart. Use your chart to help you decide what viewpoint you will take in your say. So research, try to find ideas, thoughts, opinions, examples that support your own stance. Then write them uh, in the suitable uh, place in this chart. Then after that, write your essay. So we use this chart to outline what we are going to read, uh, uh, what we are going to write about. Here we have another example from the workbook on page 28. Exercise M, write a persuasive essay answering the question, is it a good idea to watch what you eat? Before you write, think of reasons why it's or it's not a good idea to watch what you eat and write them in the chart below. We have here the same situation. A question, is it a good idea to watch what you eat? And two stances, which one do you pick? You can use this as an exercise, as a practice for you before writing uh, the persuasive essay in the uh, student's book. Pick one of, of the sides, research for information, ideas, thoughts, examples, opinions, anything that you think could help you writing your own persuasive essay, then write all the information here. 
and after that try to write the opposing ideas so you can reply to them and refute these ideas. Now we have here the importance of beauty. This is a small uh, essay or a part of the essay. It's just an introduction to give you a hint of how to write your own uh, <clears throat> persuasive essay. It says, although some say that being beautiful has its drawbacks, I think beauty brings far more benefits than problems. When I say beautiful, I mean healthy, well-groomed, and attractive. It's obvious that looking good on the outside also makes one feel good on the inside. And here we have blanks. So this is an example of how to start your own essay. You can start with stating the opposing uh, statement, then you can put your own uh, opinion on the on the following sentence for example although some say that being beautiful has its drawbacks this is not your or this is not the author's opinion this is the author's opinion you can start uh, your essay by using uh, although after that we have the last part of our lesson today which is the writing corner in the writing corner we always have some tips or some advices that could help us writing our own essays properly. The first one, think about opposing views and arguments. If you have an opinion in your mind, think about the opposing ideas or the opposing arguments so you can be able to reply to these ideas or these arguments. Number two, consider your viewpoint. Think about it, try to reflect uh, upon your viewpoint so uh, you deepen this viewpoint and uh, find more examples and a better understanding for your viewpoint. Use arguments that support your view. Use arguments that weaken the opposing view. Address your reader in a friendly and as friendly a manner as possible. Address opposing views as if you can hear the reader's thoughts. Don't patronize your reader and don't be aggressive. That means try to be friendly once you provide the, the reader with your own advices or with your own uh, opinions. Reflect on the things that put you off and lead you to stop reading something and avoid such things when you write. This is the last part of our lesson today. Thank you all for attending and I wish you enjoy the rest of the day. Salam alaikum.